and welcome to the celebration of our Eucharist. And we begin our celebration today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us into everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who through your word reconciles the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten towards the solemn celebrations to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the second book of Chronicles. In those days all the princes of Judah, the priests and the people, added infidelity to infidelity, practicing all the abominations of the nations, and polluting the Lord's temple, which he had consecrated in Jerusalem. Early and often did the Lord, the God of their fathers, send his messengers to them, for he had compassion on his people and his dwelling place. But they mocked the messengers of God, despised his warnings, and scoffed at his prophets, until the anger of the Lord against his people was so inflamed that there was no remedy. Their enemies burned the house of God, tore down the walls of Jerusalem, set all its palaces afire, and destroyed all its precious objects. Those who escaped the sword were carried captive to Babylon, where they became servants of the king of the Chaldeans and his sons, until the kingdom of the Persians came to power. All this was to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, until the land had retrieved its lost Sabbaths. During all the time it lies waste, it shall have rest, while seventy years are fulfilled. In the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, in order to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, the Lord inspired King Cyrus of Persia to issue this proclamation throughout his kingdom by both word and mouth and in writing. Thus says Cyrus, King of Persia, all the kingdoms of the earth, the Lord, the God of heaven, has given to me. And he has also charged me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Whoever therefore among you belongs to any part of his people, let him go up, and may his God be with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. By the streams of Babylon we sat and wept when we remembered Zion. On the aspens of that land we hung up our harps. Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. For there are captors asked of us, the lyrics of our songs, and the despoilers urge us to be joyous. Sing for us the songs of Zion. Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. How could we sing a song to the Lord in a foreign land? If I forget you, Jerusalem, may my right hand be forgotten. Let my tongue be silenced if 
if I ever forget you. May my tongue cleave to my palate, if I remember you not, if I place not Jerusalem ahead of my joy. Let my tongue be silenced, if I ever forget you. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, God who is rich in mercy because of the great love he has for us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, brought us to life with Christ. By grace, you have been saved, raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavens in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from you, it is a gift from God. It is not from works, so no one may boast, for we are his handiwork, created in Christ Jesus for the good works that God has prepared in advance that we should live in them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise and honor to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Praise and honor to you, Lord Jesus Christ. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might have eternal life. Praise and honor to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord be with you. And this is a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to Nicodemus, Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the verdict, that the light came into the world, but people prefer darkness to light, because their works were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light, and does not come toward the light, so that his works might not be exposed. But whoever lives the truth comes to the light, so that his works may be clearly seen as done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. Each year, every pastor within our churches through canon law must give the annual financial summary to all of our parishioners. And I'd like to do that today, but before I do that, I'd like to just congratulate each and every one of you, especially during this pandemic time when we thought that we would be losing a lot of financial means here within our parish. Our people have been so wonderful, not only in coming to church, but also in sending in their offerings through the mail, as well as those here in our baskets. And so as we look at all of our papers that we have in our bulletins today, we see that our first row has all of the actuals, the second row has the budget of 2020, and the third row has the budget of 2021 that our finance councils and myself have come together with. So when we look at all of our ordinary income and we see the total income coming down to $475,544. And we look at the budget last year of saying that we would be possibly bringing in $586,000. It was, let's say again, very well. When we look through all of the expenses that takes place within all of the different aspects of our parish life, we see that we had $407,527 that were our expenses and that our net ordinary income
income ended with $68,017, whereas to the budget we had $74,821. And then when you look at the, the net realized and unrealized gains that we had, the Hartford Bishops Foundation, the money that came in from all of our pledges from the people during this past year, the depreciation expenses, and we look at what our final net income was for last year, was $148,177. And when we had sent in the budget up to Hartford last year, we figured that we would be about $74,821. When we look at this year, as we go through everything, and working as well with our accountant, and going through it and seeing where we can, let's say, keep things as is, where we needed to add a little bit more as far as uh, dealing with utilities. We see that this year as we sent up our paperwork to Hartford is that we said that we would be $10,850 in the black. When we look at all of our assets, we see our checking and savings account, the packed investment accounts, our scholarship investments and other fixed and other assets. We see that our liabilities and equities all come to a total of $1,951,090. And when we look at what we had budgeted itself as far as for last year, it would have been $1,780,232. So again, it was a very excellent year, you know, despite the pandemic and despite all of the uncertainties that have been coming through for all of us. When we look towards our statistics, of our parish community. We see that in 2020, we brought in 34 children for baptisms, 56 First Holy Communions, 79 who received the Sacrament of Confirmation, four weddings, 71 funerals. And then when we look at our students in faith formation concerning this year and the previous year, what we notice as far as in the reporting, as far as dealing with our actual um, census, you know, say for all of the students, what didn't take place before is that those who are in 10th, 11th, and 12th graders are supposed to be going forth as being uh, placed off of the records because they have already received their sacraments. Uh, however, when we looked at all of those things, those numbers were still in play, you know, say for giving the statistics. So la last year we had 684 individuals within our faith formation program and in 2020, uh, and right now, we have 475 students. Our students are not only coming into classes, but also are homebound. And as they are going through all of their instructions, both in class and homebound, the students are sending in their materials, uh, let's say with their parents. Uh, we're being able to mark them off as being present, uh, even though we have this pandemic going on because what takes place is that if we don't do that, then they're not advanced in the system as far as for the following year and going to the next grade. So again, a very good report, and I thank each and every one of you. When we look at our readings today, and as we see everything that comes before us during this holy season, we see that in our gospel passage, the aspect of light, the aspect of darkness, and we know that as we are in this holy season of Lent, a time in which each and every one of us are following Jesus in the desert, going on to the road towards Calvary and eventually towards resurrection, we know that as people of darkness, it's all of the sins that we commit in our lives. But as people of light, we have Jesus ever before us, showing us that great light. And as we have been baptized on the day of our baptism, that light was entrusted to us and to our parents and our godparents to be leading us always in the ways of faith and in the light of Christ. And even when we pass from this life into our eternal life, that same light is entrusted to us to carry on towards eternal rewards because of all of the good and faithful things that we have done in our lives. So today let us then pray during this Mass at this very time that we too can be those children of the light always following Jesus in all that we say, all that we do, and all that we are. But when we fall into that darkness of sin, that we can change our lives around by using the sacrament of reconciliation 
to bring us back into that loving fold and know that we have Jesus, that's our welcoming Father, always being there to bring us back into that wonderful light. And so now, as we commit ourselves to the continual conversion to Jesus, who is the light of the world, let us offer our prayers and our petitions to our Father in heaven. And so we pray for the leaders of the church. May Christ, the source of wisdom, strengthen their hearts as they continue to teach laws of God in our world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our national and local leaders, may God strengthen them in honor and integrity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, the suffering, and those who live in the darkness of fear, may God bring them the light of his healing and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For this faith community, may God help us to live our faith more abundantly in order to bear good fruit for him. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, may they experience the joy and the light in heaven with all those who have gone before us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray in special fashion today at this Mass for baby Levi, for whom this Mass is being offered. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We now pause in the silence of our hearts and our own personal intentions. For these intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, we entrust our prayers to you in this holy name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. You 
are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by setting down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which we poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Leonard, our Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Baby Levi, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that Baby Levi, who is united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And at our Savior's command, and for my divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace.
May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ truly bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. May the receiving of your body and blood, Lord Jesus Christ, not bring us to judgment and condemnation, but through your loving mercy, be for us protection, mind and body, and a healing remedy. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ and the blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen. Amen.
O oh God, who enlightens everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty and love you in all sincerity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust her down Satan and all of evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, in the gospel we hear, the voice of the Father telling us to listen to you. It is your voice that we heed, it is your way that we follow, it is your spirit who leads us into all truth. Look kindly upon your church and the archdiocese of Hartford, and upon the work of our archdiocesan synod. We pray that through the synod our souls may be stirred and our hearts set on fire in order to bring new energy and zeal to the mission of our local church. May the synod inspire us to missionary discipleship so that filled with the faith and the boldness of the apostles and those first Christians, we may draw others to you and to your body and bride, the church. At Pentecost, Mary, your mother, joined the apostles in imploring the gifts of the Holy Spirit. By your prayers and those of our spouse, St. Joseph, our patron, May the same Holy Spirit inspire and direct us and the work of our synod. Through you, Lord Jesus, we give glory to the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless each one of you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, our Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Have a beautiful week. Stay well and stay safe. And just as a reminder where you've been sitting, Please place your kneelers down so we can sterilize those pews before our next Mass. Have a great night.